Hello everybody and welcome back to Lake Episode 5, Friday, September 5th, in game. So in today's episode, I'm going to try something a bit different and I'd like to know what you think about this down in the comments section. Episodes 1 through 4, we've already got a good sense of what the daily routine is, what you have to do, delivering the envelopes and the packages and things like that. And uh, I think you've got a pretty good uh, feel for the map as well. So in this video, I'm going to focus more on making the deliveries that have character interactions and dialogue and cut out all the uh, ones where you just drop the package or, you know, go to the mailbox and that's it. So again, please let me know what you think of that. And uh, let's go ahead and get on with the show. I hope you enjoy. It's a nice rainy day. It's a nice little change from what we've experienced so far. But uh, let's get Meredith into the truck so she can get out of the rain. And I've tried to turn the radio off altogether, but it just doesn't seem to want to listen. So we're just going to have a look at the map here, get a little peace and quiet. <laughs> so we've got five letters and four parcels to deliver today. Um, during these rounds, we have some um, achievements that should pop. We're going to be starting the uh, Shutterbug mission with the woman at the general store. And that'll carry on into the next day because you have to return the film on the next day. Um, the metal detector mission, that pops off over here by Reynolds Farm. So we should see whatever that fella is that, uh, you know, spawns that achievement. And then, of course, there's the um, ongoing thing that we've done here with the movie carrier with Angie doing the movie box deliveries. So that should pop after we do Lori and Mr. Mackey. The achievement we earn from um, doing whatever ridiculous thing that Steve requests when he calls. So we'll see. That probably won't pop until the end of the game, but we'll see. Today's contribution is from Mildred, the senior authority on pets and thieves. It's so positive this time, Jack. My cat Mortimer was feeling ill, but thanks to Bert Mackey and our new mailman, Meryl, he's in great condition again. <laughs> Meryl. <laughs> Playlist. 207 Main. Pick that up. And we'll go in to see Miss Sunshine. <laughs> oh, good morning, Nancy. Here's the mail, ma'am. Ugh. One of those yellow parcels. Yeah. Yellow. Who wants a yellow box? <laughs> Isn't yellow the color of fun and happiness? It's for that thing behind the door, a photography mini lab. They installed it last week and they want me to operate it. As if I don't have enough on my plate already. Yeah, it must be pretty hard work standing back there smoking cigarettes. <laughs> That's pretty nice, actually. I love photography. Some people think they can become professional photographers overnight. Well, photography can be just for fun, too, right? Look, if you want to take photographs, knock yourself out. They want me to practice with the mini lab before the service is officially offered. They sent me a practice kit with the camera and film. Yeah, you're just so pleasant and sweet. I mean, I just feel it's my mission in life to help you. Really? I'd love to take pictures. The surroundings here are wonderful. Well, here you go, and good luck. Take some pictures and then return it to me. Have a nice day, ma'am. Roger that, Nancy. On the job. Press Y to get the camera. Here we go. Yeah, let's, let's, let's take a picture of you, Nancy. There you go, nice dramatic photo. <laughs> Let's talk to Nancy again and see what happens here. I'll be glad when I can close up the shop. This day is taking forever. That a girl. Chin up. Keep that positive attitude. Customers appreciate it. <laughs> so again, we'll have to take 12 pictures all together. Hey, don't shove anything in your pockets, pal. We're watching. You got a bald spot in the back of your head. Your toupee glue is coming off. Uh, of course, look at that. We're backing up traffic. Yeah, see, I should take a picture of that. Here, Nancy will take a picture of the general store. So you can advertise where your little photo mat is. <laughs> I think this is a good spot for a picture. <laughs> I 
Okay, there we go. 7 of 12. 8 of 12. We don't have to be Ansel Adams. We just need to get it done. Speed limit's 25. I bet you I'm going over that. Whoa. Hey, now. Okay, I see how it's going to be here. Going to have to install a bull bar on my uh, mail truck. <laughs> Hopefully the movie box is in the back. Yep. At your service, ma'am. Hey, Miss W. You got some mail for me today? No, but I have something else. Angie from the Flick Shack asked me to deliver some movie boxes. She also asked me to deliver some to you. Oh, tight. What are the options? Let me see. The Love Bug or A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh. That last one might be too scary. Too scary. I'm almost 16, Miss W. I can take a horror movie. If you say so, Lori, I wouldn't want you to get any actual nightmares. I promise I won't get any nightmares. So you'll pick a nightmare on Elm Street? Give me the love bug. <laughs> Yeah, let's poke at her a little bit. I'm 16. I could take a horror movie. Scary movie too scary after all? No, of course not. But if my parents catch me watching Elm Street, they'll brown me for a week. I wish they'd just take a chill pill and see that I'm basically an adult. I fix cars. Oh, no, that's too bad, Lori. Maybe you can watch it at a friend's house instead. No, I'm homeschooled. There aren't many teenagers here, as you may have noticed. So I don't really have any friends to watch it with. So it's a love bug for me. We'll do this option here. You don't invite 16-year-olds to your house to watch scary movies against her parents' advice <laughs> <laughs> or permissions. Well, I'm sure you'll like it too. You'll get to see A Nightmare on Elm Street one day. I guess so. Thanks, Miss W. Have a nice day. You too, Lori. Yeah, you do that. All right, so let's take a picture of Lori. Oh, the rain stopped. And I mean, it just, like, stopped. <laughs> okay, there's no zoom on the camera. Oop. Get a picture of the popo. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the horn button resets the vehicle as well. All right, so now we have to go to Moe's Diner, deliver a package, and then over to Reynolds Farm. I'll jump cut, and I'll see you once I get close to there. All right, let's go see how Maureen's doing today. Park in our usual spot. Go to the back and get the package. Five hundred Lake. What on earth do these folks order? It's called none your business. <laughs> Hi, Kay. Delivery for the diner. Hey, Meredith. Sure. Just uh, put it on the counter, would you? Kay, about the other day. What about it? I really put my foot in it. Maybe it wasn't the best time for that conversation. Maybe not. Yeah. So, I talked to Maureen. Let me guess. You got a piece of Maureen's wisdom, too, eh? Why doesn't that surprise me? That explains why she wanted me to take over today's shift, then. She told me about Uncle Stan. I'm so sorry. Thanks. It was a long time ago, but I appreciate it. It's not the same without him. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you and Maureen. That's kind of you to say, Meredith. I mean, I didn't contact you about it at the time, but then again, I had kind of given up by then. Honestly, I was so overwhelmed back then. With university, then work, you know. I get it. There's always a reason for things to go the way they do. Even so, it never seems to be the right reason. Time marches on. What did Maureen always say about that again? One day you realize it's, it's marching, marching across, across your across face. Your face. <laughs> 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 oh, Mo. Some things never change. Didn't she steal that line from somewhere anyway? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Em. It was good to talk, I mean, you know. Yeah, 
It was. I have to get back to it, but see you around, maybe? I'm sure. See ya. All right, onto the Reynolds farm. So now, instead of driving past this part, we get to turn up the road. Oh, I think that's the person out there, the metal detector guy. Yep. Let's see. Probably not a good idea to walk on the farmer's crops, though, but let's see what's going on here. You shouldn't be out here doing that in the middle of somebody's crops. You should be ashamed of yourself. Hi there. Sorry, pardon? Hi there. Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting a metal detector here. Uh, I'm not a metal detector, actually. Oh, of course, you're a detectorist. Very good. If I had a penny for every time someone called me a metal detector, I'd have, well, I, I'd have a lot of pennies. <laughs> I bet. And you wouldn't be out here with a metal detector looking for him. <laughs> have you found anything interesting yet? Yeah, I've, I've found a couple of things. A uh, nail, penny, a soda can, empty soda can. Not the things you're looking for, I presume? I'm not sure what I'm looking for, to be honest, but I guess that's part of the fun. Saves me from disappointment as well. But I guess you wouldn't mind digging up a treasure. Yeah, although maybe that's just what I'm telling myself when secretly I'm hoping for treasure. Even a penny can be worth a treasure. Oh yes, metal detecting is a surefire way to become a millionaire. Whoops, did I just reveal the world's best kept secret? Yeah, I think you got a little more waving of that magic metal wand of yours before you'll be a millionaire. <laughs> no worries. It's safe with me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to get back to it now. I need to be at our MDC later. A metal detectorist club. Nice. A metal detecting club. We compare finds, we discuss the hobby. Sometimes our club president gives a talk on things like buttons. Buttons. That's not dorky at all. <laughs> I think I'd wait for the one on huge gold nuggets. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, nice meeting you. It was nice to meet you, too. Good luck. There's our achievement. Metal detector. All right. Take care, dagger one. <laughs> All right. Let's get this package delivered. Nice little tractor in there. Looks like an old, maybe a 50s era John Deere. We'll have to take a quick look. You know I can't resist. Probably going to get in trouble though. Oh yeah, that's a John Deere all right. I actually had this tractor in Farm Sim. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's a good spot to take a picture. And then we got just one more picture to uh, complete that little part of the mission. Oops, left the package in the truck. Of course. I couldn't get away with a clean record today as far as forgetting things. <laughs> I was doing so well. What on earth did these folks order? Oh, I should drop it in the outhouse. <laughs> Hello, sir. I reckon that's a parcel with my name on it. I reckon your name is Jack Reynolds? Indeed I am. And I reckon you're the new postal worker? I reckon you could say that. Well, thank you much. New around here, I reckon. People call me JR. I'm a farmer and DJ. I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you. Using a lot of uh, reckons, aren't we? <laughs> reckon the dialogue. <laughs> DJ and Farmer? That's a rare combo. Indeed it is. But it's a nice distraction from farming. I've seen better times. I had some spare time and a room in the shed, so I figured, why not? About your playlist. I think it could use some more songs. Indeed, indeed. Working on that. But I'm in the middle of a potato harvest. Don't have much time. Hey, listen. Postal worker Meredith, I need to get back to work. Can you do me a favor and give this envelope to Frank? Sure, no problem. Thank you so much. 
There we go. Yeah, I wasn't going to get too anal about it and say, I don't accept any mail without postage. All right, so I think we... Yeah, let's go look at the outhouse real quick. <laughs> Just so we could say we did. As a matter of fact, because what's her face at the store? I don't remember why I can't remember her name all the time, but she has a crappy attitude, so we'll take a picture of where she can put her crappy attitude. How's that? Here's your mail. Here's your mail. <laughs> and we are done with pictures. All right. Back right up over here, but out of the way so our customers can get in and out. Well now, Meredith and Robert. Welcome to Moe's. Table for two. Hi, Maureen. Yes, please. A quiet one, if possible. We've got work to do. Is that what they're calling it now? Speaking of work, Robert, someone reckoned they could fix the roof themselves and uh, <clears throat> made it worse somehow. I mean, foot just went right through. No physical harm, thankfully. The roof, yes. I promised to take a look at it. Uh, let me check out the damage real quick. Be right back. Thanks, darling. Hmm. Sure is one of the good ones right there. He seems very nice, but I haven't actually talked to him longer than ten minutes. What's time got to do with anything? You know what you want when you see it, hon. Oh, Maureen, please. What do you take me for? For a human being, of course. Don't go telling me city life turned you into a robot now. I don't buy it for a second. Anyway, let me show you to my nicest table. I hear the sun hits your face in all the right places here. Well, that's good. We don't want monster lighting. <laughs> okay, so what you're saying is there's a couple of things we can do, but no chainsaws. Definitely no chainsaws for the moment. It's just that the remaining options will take time, effort, and patience. Well, that's one out of three for me. Can I get you lovebirds? Anything else? Maureen, really? I could always decide not to fix your roof today, you know? Don't worry, Robert. I know Maureen. I'm sure she doesn't mean anything by it. <laughs> I hope Angie don't see them through the window. She's going to get jealous. <laughs> A coffee refill would be nice. Thanks, Maureen. Gotcha, hun. Robert? The same for me, please. Sure thing. Back in a jiff. Ashley, is that coffee machine still running? <laughs> they what? Glad we're finally done for today. But there's more to come. You didn't even do anything. <laughs> do you think he'll manage? What do you think? I try not to. It gets me into trouble all the time and gives me a headache. <laughs> to be honest, you probably need some extra help. Is that an offer? Yeah, sure. Okay, you two hard-working individuals. Here you go. Thanks, Maureen. Uh, more coffee. How could anyone survive without it? So... How's life in P.O. so far? It's only been a week, but so far so good. Yeah, I've been here a bit longer. Time sure does fly. I'm sure you must have some good stories. Yeah, uh, look, Meredith, I'm sorry. I really better get started on fixing that roof. It's just, uh, that's quite a big job. While it's still light out and all. You know, so thanks so much for your help. I mean, I really do appreciate it. Drive home safe. Um, I'll see you around town. So, yeah, I'll see you. Everything okay over here? Yeah, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Good day. My name is Walter Morgan. I'm from the Postal Service. I'm calling with regards to compliance to policies and guidelines such as the use of Postal Service property, code of conduct, and so on. Uh-oh. I will be in touch again soon. That doesn't sound good. Meredith, it's Steve. Oh, hi, Steve. Thanks so much for improving the text and sending it back to me. I'm confident this will improve our chances of securing a monster deal. You're welcome, Steve. A monster deal? 
It's a monster deal. The big retailer, big money, big prizes. A monster deal? That is so awesome. Big money, big prizes. Ooh, I need to calm down, too. <laughs> well, yes, calmness is needed. Eyes on the prize. The next steps are me going to meet up with them this week. Discuss terms. Eye of the tiger. Go get him, Steve. Thanks, Meredith. Speak soon. Eye of the tiger. Now, that's an 80s saying. <laughs> So we've tried staying home and watch TV, so let's do the book. The Countess and the Carpenter? <laughs> really, Mom? Oh, well, let's give it a read. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 1. A more disastrous entry to her new home was scarcely imaginable for Cecilia Schultenbrow. The left wheel of her carriage collapsed, right as she entered through the gates of the magnificent Raubenstaben estate. She tumbled upside down hurt her head, and worse, her hat was ruined. Suddenly, she heard the deep, strong voice of a young man. Are you all right, madam? All right, so that was rather a surprising phone call from the, what I assume is the postmaster. And I don't know if he works directly in the uh, post office here in town, or if he's from like a headquarters or something like that. But um, my assumption is that it's just Frank, Meredith, and her father that's associated with the post office, and they run that little um, satellite. So that means that somebody had to rat Meredith out seeing her around town doing what she's doing. So, you know, your guess is as good as mine. So we're going to find out in episode six, you know, what's going to happen with all that and who the rat is, if there's a rat at all. But I think somebody in town really uh, dropped a dime on her. So I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. And I think from now on, I'm going to leave you with a very appropriate quote that I have been saying for many years. And it's a quote by George Bernard Shaw. We don't stop playing because we grow too old. We grow old because we stop playing. So keep on playing. Take care and see you in the next one. Bye for now.